So I'm here to present our company. Uh, we consider ourselves a global leader in the next in A5 um, biology and medicine. Uh, why that's important, I think you will hopefully understand when I'm finished. Um, our company is located in Stockholm. We're listed on First North. Uh, we have a great team. We can see the images of them down there. Uh, I'll not present them in any detail, but we have the in-house capacities that we need currently, but we out-license and, and, and work, and outsource a lot of our work. Um, we are, we're, have a novel biological drug called NXV. It's basically 100% or 95% mimic uh, of the endogenously existing NXN A5 protein. And myself and all of you are full of the protein. It's there to protect your cells from damage and help them survive better if they get attacked by immune system when they are stressed by, by different reasons reasons. So uh, what we do have in short is a promising phase two trial performed in the US, which I will come back to. Uh, we have good data. We also are building an attractive position in oncology. So the drug presents itself to the clinicians who, who are using it as a vi in a vial. It's frozen. Uh, it's thawed and then it's infused in, in the superficial vein in the arm or in the hand to treat the patients. Currently, we believe it can be developed further to a to a subcutaneous formulation and so forth, but currently it's an intravenous infusion. Uh, it is there to block the actions of a phospholipid. There's a phospholipids make up the cell membrane, and when cells are stressed, they flip one of them, called PS, or phosphatidylserine, to the outside. And when, when the P is on the outside, it starts interacting with other cells, it makes them sticky, it starts getting inflammation, and does all sorts of bad things. And the next A5 is there to push, bind to, PS and push it back into the cell, and thereby restoring cell function and protecting the membrane from further injuries. We had a lot of different opportunities uh, to work in different diseases. The animal model data are striking. There are probably 10 different, very different diseases in which animal models could suggest that, well, the next in A5 would be able to treat and, and potentially cure some diseases. We ended up deciding to go in ophthalmology, which is eye disease, uh, and we have recently also started some efforts in cancer. Um, the eye disease, retinal vein occlusion, is fairly unknown. It really occurs in very healthy, smiling uh, people over age of 50. Uh, it actually is caused by an occlusion in the superficial or a vein, small vein in the back of the eye. And the veins are draining the blood from the retina, netina in Swedish. Uh, and when the, when the drainage is stopped because of its clogging of cells in the vein, you get accumulation of fluid, you get swelling of the retina. Um, Fluids starting to accumulate between the layers of the retina. We get some bleeding, some, some uh, cell death, and so forth. And the visual experience a patient can experience just all of a sudden is what you see to the right on, the, on one eye. Blurry vision, it, they can go, come completely blind on that eye, or they can restore their function a little bit. But that's how they experience the disease. It's a huge market. It's a growing to 20 billion US dollar market mostly in the US, uh, is dry, driven by anti-VEGF use. It's basically a drug which is, which is part taking care of the swelling of the retina. It doesn't change the disease or the risk of getting it again. It just takes away the swelling of the retina. And this is how it's, in, it's used. It's injected straight into the eye of the patient, and they need to come back typically monthly after diagnosis. I will show you some data on that later, but it's a very Obviously, an unpleasant experience to get a needle into the eye and repeatedly come back, get another injection. So they need roughly six or more injections the first year. Um, and they, they, will, they will expense in medicine that drives the market value. Uh, and so I just could maybe go back to show that our opportunity is presenting itself as an intravenous infusion. We use it for five days right now. And obviously, it's a short-term infusion. Uh, it's going to be maybe done for five days, and that will probably, hopefully, change the course of the disease. Mechanistically, our drug NXV does a lot of different things compared to the anti-VEGF being a standard of care right now. Uh, we have anti-adhesive properties, so the, the red blood cells in this patient, they get sticky. They adhere to each other, probably causing occlusion in the vein. We have an anti-inflammatory effect. We have effects on saving cells, we have effects on, 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 on sparing different kinds of cells, while the anti-VEGFs are basically taking away the swelling and some of the formation of red, you know, new vessels in the eye, which are detrimental. So having done this, we decided to, we've known all this, and we decided to go into a phase one trial during the COVID period. We managed that, uh, and now we're, we're just finished 
a phase two A proof of concept trial uh, in, in time. nine minutes remaining. Okay. Good. So the phase two trial, uh, a trial was done in the US. We had interactions with the FDA that were very positive. So we decided to do it in the US and seven different clinical sites. It started off as a placebo control <laughs> trial, but we were advised not to continue as a placebo control trial by key opinion leaders. So the, the idea is that to capture the patient soon after diagnosis, that's when we think we can do the most good to the patients. Uh, and we tried three, three different doses. Uh, two milligrams, four milligrams, and six milligrams. And we, obviously, you do it in stepwise fashion. They come to the clinic, treated for five days, and then they're followed for, at first, was 29 days. And we saw a lot of interesting effects. Then, and based on advice from, from key opinion leaders, with the advice as well, expand the study to look for effects and, and safety for, for four months. And please take out the placebo group because we have sufficient safety and uh, it's kind of a disease where you have a hard time recruiting patients into placebo controlled trials, so they advised us to move on in that fashion. Obviously, we look at many different parameters. All of you have been to the, to the, to the doctor looking at the visual acuity board and try to see how many letters you can read on the different lines um, on the board. Few of you have probably had a fewer examination of the eye, but eye, the eye is not only the mirror of the soul, it's, very, it's a great organ to look into by different instruments that the ophthalmologists have. So uh, you can look at the, the swelling of the retina, you can look at the blood flow and in detail in the eye, uh, you can look at the larger areas of retinal function compared to the visual acuity board. The visual acuity board is, is when, it's, when you have good vision, you can, it's only based on a few millimeters, square millimeters of, of the retina. Uh, but you can look at larger areas of it. Uh, and then, of course, in our case, we wanted to understand how many anti-VEGF injections do our patients need compared to the, to the expected average. And we also look for the, for the target PS, of course, which is circulating in the blood in these patients. I will take the liberty to jump straight into what I call a favorable case, uh, where I will show you what, what, what is some of the effects of where we presented already top line data. This is a favorable. I don't not claim we have such great effects in all the patients, but we have interesting cases to present. Uh, this is a patient which is, is um, fairly young, relatively speaking, with a visual acuity of quite, quite low. It translates into a number. Hmm. Digital pointer doesn't seem to be happy. Okay, well, it translates into a number. Uh, what happened to this patient when it received five injections or infusions of, of NXV was that the visual acuity, meaning reading many more letters, improved uh, quite dramatically in this patient. And this patient did not receive any anti VEGF. And also the swelling was significantly reduced. And it turned out to be stable uh, for the 16 weeks that we followed the patients. Uh, and that's, that's, that's great news. There are some variabilities. You see the line goes a bit up and down, but the bottom line here, it's a very, it's a very interesting case. Uh, and the most striking part of this image, I think, is in the middle, where a patient is exposed to flashing lights, small, tiny lights to the back of the eye. And it pushes a little button if the patient can see the flash, and then that kind of gives you an image of how the retina works. And if the patient comes in, you see the black or dark red area represents an area where the patient could not see the flashing lights, and having received an exin, uh, it improved significantly and pretty much restored normal vision, uh, which is a striking case. And you can see the swelling of the retina on the, on the gray-black image there. The, the, swe the swelling is the, 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 the area between these lines uh, to the left when the patient got into the clinic, and how it looked in the retina after having been treated with NXV. So there is, as cautiously, there is some spontaneous recovery. So I cannot, we don't claim an effect. We claim we have patients with signals of effect. This is just to show you the data, how it's treated today. So ILEA, which is the golden standard, uh, right now is injected, recommended to be injected three times once every month or once one treatment every month after three, then the doctor can decide to use it a bit less. A bit less. In the real world, uh, the patients receive up to normally after five injections the first six months, whether it's a, a more severe B, B, uh, CRVO, which is called central vein occlusion, or a branched vein occlusion. So this is the kind of expected average. 
In our study, uh, first and foremost, which is important, this was not a statistically built uh, study to, to show a clear difference. So it was an open label study. First and foremost, it was a safety study. It was the first in patient study ever. So we're very happy to report a favorable safety and tolerability profile, first of all. Uh, we enrolled 16 patients. We had one placebo before we changed the protocol to become open label. We have 14 patients that we've evaluated for, for four months. We have 12 patients who have not received uh, any or just one anti-VEGF during those four months. Seven of these 12 patients uh, have been have been uh, treated with no anti-VEGF, five have been treated with one anti-VEGF injection. As, as I mentioned, that's, that's lower than, than expected. However, this was a decision made by the treating physician, so we, cannot, we didn't have strict criteria, so we cannot claim this is a, this, the anti-VEGF has been used exactly the same way it would, it would normally be. But still, it's a very interesting set of data in our mind. So having spoken about uh, Ophthalmology, I will, I will not talk, talk about ophthalmology, I will just say that we are currently deep diving into the data. Uh, we're looking at every detail, not only swelling and visual acuity board, we're looking at blood flow, we're looking at leakage, and several different parameters, which is an intensive work ongoing at the moment. And we know that, that the partners, potential partners are interested in this kind of data as well. Just briefly on oncology. So, the work in oncology is not doesn't come from our lab or from our ideas. It's been published in dozens of scientific papers that claim that, well, PS is exposed on cancer cells, and cancer cells use PS as a way to hide away from the immune system. It's called, that's called checkpoint inhibition. And it's also published papers showing that, well, an next A5 can be used to carry, to carry uh, chemotherapy drugs to the, to the cells, because based on the fact that the cells expose PS on the surface and it combines and gets into the cell. So we told ourselves, well, we cannot not do this. We have to, work, have to start with some activities in this field. Uh, and the opportunity is huge, of course. You know, immune checkpoint inhibition is a multi-billion dollar drug um, mark, market, and still 40% of the patients do not respond, typically, to the, the targets they are addressing. We're addressing PS, which is, which is quite unique. Uh, so there's an opportunity there. There's an opportunity, as I said, to attach the chemotherapy agents to the drug, uh, and get, make it go into the cells and kill them, and also for diagnosis. So s cells exposing PS on the surface uh, can be identified using SPECT or PET technology, where short-lived radioactive compound is attached to, to the drug, and then it's used with image technology. So there's a huge opportunity there which, that we cannot ignore. Uh, so, just to show you some examples, the annual data as so a checkpoint inhibitor is done by people at Johns Hopkins and Stanford. We are currently addressing patients or patient samples. We try to find out if we can diagnose and find patients with a PS exposing tumor by taking a simple blood sample. Uh, that's work that's ongoing. We do have work ongoing also in the field of chemistry and animal modeling. This is just to show one example from the, from the cell in vitro work. If you look at the, to, the, to the left, it, it, this is how cancer cells, when they are plated, they are colored yellow artificially. Uh, they attach to plastic, they start growing. So first, the above is six hours, then it's 72 hours after put, being put on the plate and growing. See so many more cells after 72 hours. And exin alone does not kill the cells. The chemotherapy agent that we used it alone did not kill the cells, but when we attached uh, or chemically bound the chemotherapy agent to an exin, it got into the cells and it killed the cells from the inside. And this is now translated into to animal studies, which we hope we're able to present uh, within not too short, not too long a while. So, uh, in summary, uh, we have an exin A. XV is a first in class potential drug uh, based on the novel mechanism of action. We, we're quite um, alone working within this field. We have a very strong IP portfolio, which is quite young. We have what, now we have a de-risk program in, with clinical phase, phase two data, which shows excellent safety and, and signs of effect. Uh, we are, as we publicly announced, seeking for a partner, a licensing partner in the field of ophthalmology. It's a very active field for licensing and, and acquisitions. So we hope we're hopeful. We cannot talk, take any sort of uh, specific dates in our in our in our mouths to say we have a deal then or or not. We're just working hard to get it, uh, and we are 
apart from ophthalmology, we're building also an attractive position in oncology. Okay, thank you for listening. Thank you so much for your presentation. We have many questions that we'll try. Oh, uh, maybe okay. I have to choose some of them uh, due to time. We'll see. What is the prevalence of uh, RVO? Well, if I, I can say that this, oh, hmm. I can hold it. I can hold it like this. So, so the, so the. So no, I think you can. Thank you. So, uh, I guess in in the US and the and the major European market, there's about the various numbers, but between 16 and 28 million people are diagnosed with it right now, and and with age, with increasing age, and so for the the, the, the prevalence is increasing. Mm -hmm. What is the business case and why should I become a shareholder? And that will be your last question, so oh, okay. keep it sharp and short. Well, uh, it's, <laughs> it's obviously a great opportunity uh, in the market with huge potential. It's, it's, we're past the phase 2A. We have a proof of concept in our view. We have good safety. There's, there's a good opportunity for, for getting a, a partner. Uh, and we look forward to developing a drug which has, has enormous potential. Mm. Thank you so much, Anders Hegestrand and Anexin Pharmaceuticals. Thanks a lot. Thank, Thank you. you.